Well, hey guys, welcome back to the next episode of Pimp My Lathe. In the previous video, I made a vertical milling attachment for the lathe's cross slide. Now, the reason for doing this is that in an upcoming video, I will be doing a bit of machining on the milling machine spindle. And in order to do that, I need to remove the spindle. And obviously, with the spindle removed, I won't be able to use the milling machine to do any work on the spindle itself. And that's where the milling attachment comes in. I'll use the lathe to hold the spindle and I can use the attachment to do all the drilling and milling that needs to be done. However, it's not so straightforward because in addition to doing all the drilling and the milling, I also need to index and rotate the part. And I also need some sort of spindle lock to hold the part steady. Now making a spindle lock for a lathe isn't exactly uncharted territory for me because I did do that with the old mini lathe and it was quite a successful project. Just a simple split aluminium ring that would clamp onto the spindle and that was all bolted to a bracket which connected to the headstock. Now I did think about doing something similar to this lathe because I'm sure that setup would work. However this time round I'm not too keen to drill into the headstock of this lathe because unlike the mini lathe this headstock is full of oil. And even if I did it wouldn't solve any of my issues when it comes to indexing and rotating the part. Now at the same time I also did think about adding some sort of click spring style indexing mechanism to the rear end of the headstock. But the truth is there really isn't a whole lot of room for mounting a whole lot at the back end of this lathe. Which I guess brings us to the crazy solution which I dreamt up. What I'm going to attempt to do is attach the dividing head to the back of the lathe. I guess this sort of sounds crazy on paper, but just looking at them now, the dividing head looks pretty similar to the tailstock. And I guess it's not too different to one of those rotating tailstock chucks that people make. The thing is though, if I do it, it does solve two of my problems in one setup. It means I can hold the part and hold it steady because the dividing head does have a spindle lock, but I can also use the indexing ring to index the part. And if I can get that to work, that is job well done. Because that's all it really needs to do. And it really only needs to work for this one setup. Now obviously I can't just bolt the dividing head to the lathe's ways, because this has prismatic ways. And even if I could, the center line of the dividing head is about 30 millimeters too low, so I need to address that too. Now for this project, I have some 25 millimeter bar steel, which I can work with. Now if it was just a little bit thicker, I could have cut off a section and used that as the riser block, but at 25mm thick, it is 5mm too thin. Now my first thought was to layer it up, maybe weld two pieces together, and then fly cut it down so it was the correct height, but if I did this, this would be a pretty big waste of material. I mean it would work, but I don't have a whole lot of this material, and I do need it for a future project. Instead what I'll do is I'll make two riser blocks that'll go at each end of the dividing head. This is going to leave the center unsupported, but I've used 1, 2, 3 blocks to support the dividing head before, and that caused no issues at all. Spacing wise, this is a pretty tight squeeze, and it will cause me a few issues in a little bit, but for a project that I'm probably only going to use once, I'm going to try and use as minimal materials as possible. With the pieces now cut off, I'll square them up in the vise and clean them up. And those are the two blanks now squared up. They're still a bit oversized, so I can take them to final dimension at a later point. 
Now the next thing that I need to do is cut a slot for the prismatic wires. Now cutting these could have been a bit awkward because not all lathes use a 90 degree prismatic wires profile, but thankfully on this lathe it is 90 degrees. So I can now use an angle block to set the part up and I can now start cutting. Okay, that certainly could have gone a lot worse than it did. That's 100% on me being a bit greedy and trying to take too deep a cut. So let's try that again and take things a little bit more slowly. Alright, and those are resting pretty well on the lathe. And with the dividing head now in place, this is roughly how it's going to sit. I'll now measure the height of the riser blocks and then take them to final dimension. Now this probably isn't going to be the best test to see whether it's perfectly on height, but I do think that it should work. I've got the part chucked up on a 17mm piece of steel, and that's firmly tightened on the chuck's end. I'm now going to use a feeler gauge to see if there's any gaps between the dividing head and the riser blocks. If the heights were off, you'd expect one end or even both ends to have some amount of gap. And even with my thinnest piece of shim stock, I couldn't see any gaps at all. Say what you want, but I think for this sort of setup that I'm going to use once, I'm happy enough with these results to continue. What I now need is a way to centre the dividing head. Originally I was planning on using that keyed channel that's underneath the dividing head to centre it, but there really isn't enough space or width on these riser blocks, especially once I add these studs for tightening it. Now I probably could make a third or a fourth riser block to accept those keys, but I think there is a simpler way of doing this. Instead what I'll do is I'll make some brackets that'll bolt to the side. I can then butt the dividing head up against the bracket and that should centre it. It's pretty basic but it shouldn't be too different to using pins on a fixture board to set parts up. So I found a piece of scrap steel and I'll clean it up on the mill. I'll then use an end mill to create a step. This step is going to create the offset to centre the dividing head. With the brackets now done, I'll now drill and tap a hole in the side of the riser block. 
All right, and that's looking pretty good so far. If all goes well, once I butt it up against the side of that, that should properly center the dividing head. The next thing that needs to be addressed is how do I hold the standoffs in place? Like the tail stock, it needs some sort of clamping place on the bottom. The most simple solution would be to drill all the way through and then stick a bolt in it, which is pretty much how they do it for the steady rest. However, I can't do that because I still need a drilled and tapped hole for holding the dividing head in place. And those things are going to be pretty much in the exact same spot. So it's at this point where my very simple, very straightforward one afternoon project became a lot more complicated than I initially was hoping for. Now the way that I'm going to tackle this is very similar to how they did it on the old mini lathe tail stock. Effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine out a cavity for a captive nut. And the nut will pull up on a stud and that will hopefully pull a clamping plate and keep everything held in place. Now I do need to make this a lot wider than the nut itself because it also needs space for a spanner to get in and rotate. Now in a perfect world I probably would have used a two flute slotting mill to do this but I don't have one of those in the smaller sizes. So what I'm going to have to do here is try my best to remove all the chips from the cut and I'm also going to have to plunge downwards at the same time whilst also moving the table backwards and forwards. Now evidently I'm not as good at multitasking as I thought I was because I also managed to burn up the end mill. Probably should have used a bit of coolant at the same time. Second time round I'll do things a little bit differently. I'll do all the plunging using a drill. I'll also make a hole through the bottom. I'll also drill and tap the top. Alright, and that's pretty much how those are going to look. As it turns out, probably not as complicated as I originally thought. Now for the front one, I did come in and go all the way through it. And this is just so I can have easier access with the spanner. Easier to come in through the outside than having to go through the middle. Now yes, there isn't a whole lot of steel on the bottom, but the clamping on this shouldn't have to be all that tight. Speaking of which, the next thing that I need to do is make the clamping plate. And once again, I'll be using some offcuts, which are roughly the correct size. Now for tapping the hole, I'll go most of the way, but I'm not going to tap the whole way through. Doing this means I don't have to use lock sights to hold the bolt in place. And the moment of truth. And yep, thankfully it works and it works really well. It's a little bit awkward to use, but it was no different when I was using this on the old mini lathe. The final thing left to do is get it all assembled and see if it works. Alright, and that's it now assembled with it all pretty much in place. Now obviously I'm pretty happy with the setup, but man does it look like a pretty insane setup. Now I don't want to make it out like this is the perfect way to do things, but for a one-off project, or at least a one-off setup, and considering that I am slapping this all together using, well, spare parts and offcuts, I think this will work out just fine. 
It all rotates pretty freely and it indexes fine enough. So in my books, if we get a good result in the end, that is pretty much going to be good enough for me. But we'll find out soon enough just how well it works. Until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video.